Niv decks make me happy in pants because as a deck builder, there is no greater challenge. And that's because Niv says, when it enters, we look at the top 10 cards of our library and put a card of each color pair into our hand. So not only does our deck have to be jammed with multicolored cards, but we want cards that are exactly two colors. And in addition, we want to evenly distribute our color pairs. In other words, we don't want too many cards from the same color guild because when Niv comes out, we will only be able to put one of those cards in hand. And then of course, there's the mana base to worry about and our mana curve. And ideally, we'll want a companion as well. So there's just so much to think about when deck building. And I just love the challenge. But sadly, all these constraints have have made Niv decks underpowered, particularly because so many cards in the deck operate at sorcery speed. So for the longest time, I prayed to Satan, aka Wizards of the Coast, for two color instant speed cards. But alas, I knew that Wizards would never be stupid enough to print those cards, because if they did, it would make Niv decks way too powerful. Except that Wizards was stupid enough to print those cards. And at last, my sick fantasy comes true, as we crush the metagame of Pioneer. Wait, no, come back, please. I know Pioneers has some uh-oh stinky moments, but after all the bannings, Pioneer is actually enjoyable. It feels a lot how modern was five, six years ago, and as an upside, we won't see any force of negations. And now I'll catch you up to speed on the Pioneer metagame. Faster than the standard? Slower than modern. Because Pioneer is slower than modern, we see traditional Niv decks quite often. If left unchecked, Niv decks just go off, because each card does so much. But sadly for Niv decks, the rest of the Pioneer metagame is built to deal with Niv. Pioneer has many aggro decks that can beat Niv decks before they even set up. Then there are graveyard decks, which are resilient to Niv's removal. And lastly, there are counter control decks. Because traditional Niv operates at sorcery speed, instant speed blue decks plow right through Niv decks. And that's the Pioneer metagame in a nutshell. As you can tell, things are quite rough for Niv decks. But then there's Daddy's new masterpiece, and it's just such a beauty. First, we now have Vanishing Verse. It exiles a monocolor permanent. It's great early game removal for burn decks and fantastic removal against graveyard decks. It just does a really good job of keeping Niv alive. But we also have the new card Prismari Command. I absolutely love this card. We choose two of its abilities to damage any target. Target player draws two and discards two. Create a treasure token or destroy target artifact. A treasure token for us is phenomenal. It makes any mana, letting us make five mana by turn four. There's also Torrential Gear Hulk out there, and since Gear Hulk is an artifact, we can kill it. But my favorite ability is draw two, discard two, especially when we make our opponent do it because. We also have Notion Thief. It says if a opponent would draw a card, we draw that card instead. So if Notion Thief is out and we play Prismari Command, we draw two, and our opponent discards two. Hooray! Oh my gosh, I'm already having so much fun. But because we're operating at instant speed, we have a lot of fun toys. Instant speed ramp, more instant speed removal, instant speed counter, and spell color. It's just so unexpected. Without lightning bolt in the format, color is very resilient to removal. All of it is just so difficult for our opponent. Because if they play something, we answer it. But if they play nothing, then we ramp. And if our opponent taps out, then we pop off the bombs. The best being bring the light, grabbing any card from our deck. Including Tybalt, or perhaps instead we want board wipe, like Definite Clarion, or the new Calling Ritual. It destroys each online permanent with converted mana cost two or less, and we get a mana for each thing destroyed. It's great against Oven, Chain to the Rocks, and Roiling Vortex. And with our created mana, we can put Juicy Jagatha into our hand. And then, as a fantastic finisher, we have the new Lore Hold Command. Once again, we choose two, make a 3 2 token, buff our creatures and give it indestructible in haste, deal three damage and gain three life, or sack to draw two cards. What is really cool about this card is that if we choose the first two abilities, our token enters with indestructible. So, in other words, if our opponent attacks us, we can throw out a 4 2 with indestructible. It's quite unexpected, but now for the hardest part about designing a Niv deck, the mana base. Daddy has that covered. Oh, I love spreadsheets. Now, here's a secret trick of our deck. If we have a land that produces both blue and black, that one land supports a lot of our deck. Lastly, let's look at our sideboard. We have counter hate, chonky hate, weenie hate, more card draw hate, combo hate, more wipe, and then Cirque, which can't be countered. And now I am so ready to go play this deck, because even though we have some overlap with traditional Niv, like the core three cards, Pro Spiral, Valky, Clarion, and sometimes these two, but we have a whopping 16 cards that are new additions to the deck. Okay, I've talked way too much. We need that gameplay. Be sure to subscribe if you like to see spankings. We'll for the do his gameplay, and I hope you enjoy. Opening hand, two lands, and they're not really the lands we need. But since we're on the draw, I guess we'll risk it. Upon plus three, we inspector. And oh boy, that's not a land. So pass back. We take one. And we do pull a land, but it's not really one we need. So pass back. Upon a cracks a clue. We take one again. And why? When we target their stuff, they draw a card. We pull a land, but it enters tapped. Alright, pass back. We take three. And opponent's playing Spellbinder. They can exile a card from our hand, and it costs two more to cast. Sure. Taking our Niv. And we can't even play Omnath this turn. Oh. So pass it back. We get spank for six. And they try to cast the elite guard mage at uh, Queller. And we're not really doing great. Might as well exile. Opponent draws and we'll pass back. Oh, Reflector Mage. Bouncing Queller to hand. And they cast the guard mage and Charming Prince. Yep, our opponent's got us. So we're going to game two. I'm going into game two. Let's bring in some wipe and with Alice go to game two. Opening hand better than last game. So we'll keep. Opponent plays Thraven. Queller, nice. And on their turn we'll grow spiral. Opponent foretells. Tickles for one. And now grow spiral. And tapped. And things are looking quite good. Opponent plays Spellbinder. We could spell call it. Or just let it hit and then command. And the treasure token would be nice. Yeah, we'll let it hit. Two damage here. And they bring the light cost more to cast. But unfortunately for our opponent, Niv, finding spell color, bring the light and lore hold. And there is a concede, so we're going to game three. On uh, game three, no change to the sideboard. And I think this is a little too land heavy. Soul Mole. And yeah, this is a bit better. Soul Keep. Upon plus Thriven, we pull Fable Passage. And now pass back. Upon plays Charming Prince. And we pull Watery Grave, we'll play it. That way we can grow spiral. Upon plays a fox again. They tickle for three. And now grow spiral. Cool. And should we calling ritual? It would take out their clue. Yeah, I think so. Spank. Put Giganta in hand. 
hand and pass it back. Opponent swings and passes back. Now, as much as I like to bring the light this turn, Jugantha might be safer. Yeah, I'll play Jugantha. All right. I want to play Sky Clay Apparition. Why? Because it only takes out things that cost four or less. So Jugantha be safe. And there is a concede for the match. We really spanked the diarrhea out of them. Speaking of which, I've already painted brand new deck boxes. It's extra large, being able to fit over 100 double sleeve cards. If you would like one, they are available at decknight.com. But now back to the spanking. Opening hand, kind of slow. The lands are okay, so we'll keep. It looks like there's some kind of graveyard sack deck. How interesting. Another one. Temple tapped and pass back. Opponent plays Bastion. They get a token. And whenever one of their hosts dies, they drain us for one. We'll prepare for Kohler and send it back. Opponent shocks. Tries for Sram's expertise, but Kohler. Hooray. And a lot of opponents still swings. Sure, block. Now I'd be at 15. We pull Grow Spiral. Let's fine play a land and then we'll pass it back. Another Bastion. Oh boy. We'll be draining us for two each time. Block here. We go to 11. Zero cards in opponent's hand. We shall Grow Spiral. Land. And now land again. Or bring the light for Omnath. Omnath comes down. Swing for two in the air. And on their upkeep, fetch. We gain four life. And our opponent's passing back. It's not looking good for them. Nib. Finding Ring the Light. And Kohler. And there's a concede. I'm going into game two. We'll dump this for this one with that. Let's go to game two. Yeesh. Not great by any means. We do have one push to buy some time. So we'll keep. Our opponent plays Witness. We'll play land and pass. Opponent plays a priest. And just to be extra safe, land and push. And now back to opponent. But when they cast into their sorcery, they get a 1 1 token. And when the token dies, they gain one life. Plus some menace. And if we target it, we lose three life. A pretty gangster card, I suppose. Opponent will be swinging. Feels a little risky, but two damage. That worked. And what is disease. Whenever they cast an or sorcery, they return a creature from their graveyard to their hand. Kind of cool. But how about this? Bring to light. Valky and a Tybalt. Exile. And with two loyalty on Tybalt, Witness can't finish it off. Opponent tickles Tybalt. And then plays Ram's expertise. Interesting. Up, Tybalt. Land. Nice. So here's what we'll do. Bring to light. Ritual. Making four mana. And casting their creature. Amazing. Oh, opponent be bringing back their creatures. That's cute. Up, Tybalt. And how about this? The rest are opponent with their duress. Witness in hand. Okay. And might as well play Lorehold. Taking out the priest. Swing. Opponent takes it. And there is a concede. It was quite the thrashing. And now I'll be on to the next match. Opening hand. One land, so we're gonna mull. Yikes. Two lands. That I suppose we'll keep. Opponent plays a land. And nice. We draw a land. Probably should have played that this turn. But oopsie poopsie. Opponent plays a mana dork. We draw another land. And now pass back. Oh, Omna. That pretty good. Now I'll press Mar command. So they only deal one to us. And a land. Hooray. Treasure. And Niv. Finding Ring the Light. Another Prince Mari. And Abrupt Decay. Opponent plays a land. Buffing their Omnath. And playing the other Omnath. Oh, that pretty good. But so is this. Bring to light. Tibble. Exile. And we'll pass it back. What is these? Another one. Oh. No. They make a nut load of mana. Playing Cobra. Mimic. Or a legendary. Oh. So they can deal three damage to Tibble. This be getting kind of dangerous. But Omnath. Land. Play land to gain four life. And send it back. Opponent plays land. I think Omnath to seven. Okay. I have idea. Land. And then on our opponent's upkeep. Notion Thief. And then Prismara command. Two damage here. And opponent can draw two and discard two. Oh. Wait a minute. Notion Thief stole their cards. And they lose their hand. Oh. But they draw an Omnath. Taking out our Notion Thief. I have idea. Land. We make four mana. Grow Spiral. Playing Land. Dealing four damage. And now Juicy Gigantha goes to hand. Play Gigantha. And swing for six. Cool. What is these? Ashaya. It makes her creatures lands. But unfortunately for our opponent. Banishing Burst. Hooray. Although they do gain four life. Back in our turn of land. So how about we cycle? Ew. Play Land. And you know what? Might as well cycle. Ew. Swing for six. And back to our opponent. Opponent plays Land. One away from having eight. And now fetch. Cycle. Another Land. Oh my gosh. You gotta be kidding me. Cycle. Okay. That's kind of better. But not that much better. Swing for six. Land and pass back. Oh no, they have the Wraith land, which means they draw a card. Prison Reef will draw another card. Oh, and it's a land again. No. With one card in hand, they be passing back. We shall decay here. Oh my gosh. This is frustrating. Swing for six. Land and pass it back. Another land for our opponent. And they play a healer. Why? <laughs> no. Swing for six. Play a land. And back to our opponent. And they play a land. Swing another healer. Vanishing Burst. Six in the air. Opponent has another land. And Cor to calling. Vanishing verse here. Close Cobra. Deafen and clear on. Not bad. Might as well play it. And we shall be ambitious. Swing with everyone. They trade there. Cool. But play another. Vanishing verse. Our opponents at one life. We're at 51. Another Ashaya. And for the third time this game. Vanishing verse on the Ashaya. Six in the air. Oh, and finally we're on to game two. Going into game two. Let's bring in this for this and with that. Let's go to game two. Wait. I kind of want disdainful strong. Yeah, we need that. In exchange for these. And with that, let's actually go to game two. Opening hand. Very land heavy. But we'll keep. We draw for Samari. And Pono plays a Cobra. Triumph. Pono plays a land. Another land. Passage. They make a mana. They swing. And what? The passing? All right. Do damage here and we'll draw and discard? Or did they have counter? Nope. Flame sweep. Not bad. But we'll just send it back. Upon a swings. And they're passing. What a loser. Ooh, and fatal push. Let's do that now. Swank and pass it back. Upon plays a land. And they're passing. Why? All right. I guess we'll risk it. Do they have mystical dispute? Yeah. And now pass it back. But now upon be passing back again. Another Niv. We're one land away from being protected from another 
mystical dispute. So let's just wait. What is these? Court of Calling? Nope. Uh oh. A Shia. That'd be out of range of spell caller. How unfortunate. Land, okay. Niv. That was spectacular. It'll be vanishing verse now. Yeah, I think so. Hooray. But an omnath. And a voice of resurgence. So here be the plan. Bring the light. Valky, Tibble, Exile. And we'll play defense. Upon plays land. And they pass. Up Tibble. Finding Omnath, but also bring the light. So play Omnath. Lawn. Take out voice. They get their tokens. Swing for six. And back to our opponent. Another Ashaya. But now this. Bring the light. Vanishing verse. Up Tibble. And then might as well Clarion. Shock. Ten. And let's see what our opponent's got. Risen Reef. Rose Spiral. Put out a lawn. And there be the match. This is too easy. So here's what we'll do. Strixhaven came out yesterday. And tomorrow there's a Pioneer Challenge Tournament. Which is where we can find the best Pioneer players. So let's see if our deck can hang with the best. Hello, big boys. It's Daddy from the Future. Narrating after the fact. First match was against the Instant Speed deck. And even though they counter our Niv, we slip out Spell Caller. At which point we don't really need to do anything. The opponent tries to play Gear Hulk, flashing back the Opus, which we counter, and then destroy their Gear Hulk. Our opponent still has some counter left. But when our opponent tries to draw, we play Notion Thief, and they have to discard their hand. With no cards left in hand, we get Tibble, and our opponent concedes. Game 2 saw a lot of ramp, but we play Surik, and our opponent knows they're in trouble. So out of desperation, they play Cum Dumpster Coma, which can gain Indestructible. But that really doesn't matter when we have Tibble, which can exile a creature. Our opponent tries to believe in themselves, but we play Spell Caller. They try to counter, but Surik prevents it. And then it's already on to match 2. Match 2, we throw out a Prismari Command, and opponent is much confusion. We then ramp, and when we play Prismari Command, opponent tries to counter, but we counter with Veto. And with only one land left, we play Bring the Light, getting Tibble, and oh boy, is our opponent in trouble. Eventually, they do play Gear Hulk, casting their off back from Graveyard, but we have both Vanishing Verse and Notion Thief, so we draw a card instead. And there's game one. There's not much to say about game two. Opponent tries to draw, and we throw down Notion Thief for the concede. And now match three already. But sadly, in match three, we experience some harsh flooding. Our opponents are doing the stuff left and right, and we just sit there. So not much of a game one, and we head straight into game two. But sadly, in game two, our opponent double discards us. We miss a land drop, allowing them to get Nara set out. And then another missed land drop, going from having too many lands in game one to not enough lands in game two. And can you believe it? We actually lose this match. I know, unthinkable. But we can add it to our repressed memories and head to match four. Match four, and what do you know? We're up against another instant speed deck. Game one was a bit of a stalemate, but we get out Omnath for just a little bit. And opponent seems like they might have things under control. They're drawing a lot of stuff. They have answers to our cards. Opponent then tries for Gear Hulk, but we have Prismari Command. And when our opponent tries to cycle, we play Notion Thief. And quite strangely, our opponent hard cast Sharknado. I guess they're not familiar with Vanishing Verse, so we throw out Tibble and take out Sharknado. They have a second, but of course we have another Vanishing Verse. Our opponent thinks they're clever and makes a token, but we have another Vanishing Verse. Then they try to kill Tibble, but we have Spellcaller. And opponent kills Spellcaller, but that's not how Spellcaller works. So Tibble survives, and we take game one. Game two has a bit of a slow start, but we draw some stuff. Opponent responds, but as opponent tries to draw, we Notion Thief. Then they hard cast Sharknado, but we draw Prismari Command. And with Notion Thief out, our opponent goes down to zero cards in hand, and our opponent concedes. Finally, in match five, we play against a deck that isn't counter. Instead, it's Is It Phoenix. We do have Vanishing Verse to exile the Phoenix, which we do exile one with, and the second with Tibble, but then they kill Tibble, and a Crackling Drake slips out, and in one fell swoop, opponent spanks us for 13, and we have to go to game two. Opponent does counter our Omnath, but then we follow up with Niv and control the rest of the game. The footage in game three cut out for a bit, but basically we get out Niv, gain some life, and at that point we just have too much going for us. Opponent does play a cool new Planeswalker, but with only eight life left, we hard cast both spell callers, and finish off our opponent with Lore Hole Command, and there's a match. And in match six, we're up against Burn. They have a fantastic game one, plowing right through us, getting out four creatures before we play anything, and opponent wins on turn four. The goal of game two was to not lose, a very valiant goal, and the first few turns were very scary. We take out the first wall answer, they play a second, we slow them down with Queller, then we try for the wipe, but our opponent gives indestructible. We go all the way down to six, but this time our ritual works, and we get to put Jagonth into our hand. Two more creatures from our opponent, but with Bring the Light, we get Omnath, and with Omnath's life gain, we go back to ten. Omnath goes to Jesus, but now our board be pretty chonky, especially with Niv. Our opponent goes for the swing, kills our Niv with double strike, but with no cards in our opponent's hand, we absolutely pop off and take it to game three. Our opponent begins the game with two Eidolons, which is pretty good, but we have Flame Sweep. And with no creatures left, we draw Prismari Command, plus a treasure token. Eight life is cutting it close until Omnath comes out. Our opponent removes, but we're back to ten. We steal the Lurus, but then they get it back. We be back down to eight, but then bring the light, getting Omnath. Looking back, calling Ritual would have been better because we could have killed the Chain of the Rocks and got our creatures back, but then we just draw one and another. We play the Ritual and completely spank our opponent, giving our stuff haste and dealing lethal. And then it's on to match seven, and this time we're up against Mono Black. And in game one, we absolutely absolutely get crushed. We two for one the creatures with Prismari Command, but at that point it's too little too late, and we have to go to game two. Game two, our opening hand is balls, and then they discard us, and discard us again. We put Gigantha in hand, wipe our opponent, put out the Gigantha, but they have removal, and sadly our opponent just keeps on coming in more ways than one. But even though we lost, we still finished in ninth place, which for a challenge tournament is fantastic, especially considering there were 80 people. And to double down on our accomplishment, I went back to finish the league, and what do you know, we went undefeated. So in the end, an 83.3% win percentage, I am most satisfied. Now the real question becomes, if our opponents saw our deck list, would we have still won all those matches? Or were we winning by surprising our opponents? That is something that we're gonna have to wait and see. But that is all for
for now. I hope you had as much fun as I did. And if you would like a deck box, they are available at decknet.com. More Strict Haven content coming very soon, so be sure to subscribe. And if there's a particular format you'd like to see, you can let me know in the comments below. But that is all for now, and as always, I hope you have a great day.